there are a few different ways to view your work and navigate around your workspace in Affinity Designer for iPad. You can press with two fingers to pan around and twist these two fingers to rotate the workspace. You can pinch outwards with two fingers to zoom in and pinch together to zoom out. They can be used in combination to quickly and precisely position your document. You can also use the navigator panel on the right. At the top of the panel, I can see a preview of the document. If the document exceeds the workspace, a viewfinder will appear. I can hold this and drag it around the document preview. Below this are some quick zoom levels. And Fit will snap the zoom level that shows the entire document in the workspace. If you want to work at a specific zoom level, you can tap the zoom percentage below and input a value. Or you could scrub left or right on the percentage button. Next to this, we have a figure showing the angle of rotation. And again, I can tap this to input a value or scrub left and right. Scrubbing up and down will also increase or decrease the angle of rotation. Tapping the lock icon will disable the rotation field so it can no longer be changed and the workspace won't rotate if you perform the twist gesture. You can tap it again to unlock it. Double tapping the rotation will reset it back to zero degrees and double tapping the zoom will snap to 100%. On iPad, the navigator panel also contains the view modes. Currently, the main view mode is set to vector and the split view mode is set to none. This means that drawn objects and text will be displayed as vector. Objects and applied effects will be shown with smooth clean edges and transitions. I can toggle across to the pixel view mode. In this mode, vector objects are presented as if they are constructed from individual pixels. This is an accurate representation of how the design will appear if it is exported to a raster format like JPEG. If I introduce a second view mode using the split view mode box, a line will appear and I can move my document left and right to compare the two view modes. Now the main view mode is applied on the left and the split view mode is displayed on the right. There are other view modes too. Retina pixel is similar to the pixel mode, but in this case it represents how your design will be displayed on retina or high DPI displays. The outline mode will hide all strokes and fills in your design and only display the vector paths. Selection behaviours will change, so grouped objects can be selected immediately like ungrouped objects. This is great for making the finest adjustments to curves and nodes throughout your layer stack because all the curves are exposed. However, in very complex designs, it can be difficult to know if you're selecting the right curve. The X-ray mode displays the object's fill at a reduced opacity. This can help give a point of reference when selecting and editing the curves and nodes. The hairline mode ignores all line weights, so all curves are displayed as thin lines, regardless of zoom level. This is particularly useful for CAD documents, as the hairline mode displays the design as they would be displayed in CAD apps. Next to the view modes are view mode options. They can be used in conjunction with other view modes and combined with each other. You can choose to view your document in grayscale. This can be useful for evaluating contrast and dynamic range in your design. You can also choose to hide or show layer effects. I'll disable grayscale and enable hide effects. Now we can see the exact shapes of the blurred curves. This design contains a few layers that have layer effects applied. Using a view mode option that hides layer effects can greatly improve performance as you work particularly when working with large documents that contain hundreds of layers with layer effects. Finally, you might want to view objects that extend beyond the edge of the document or sit entirely on the pasteboard. To do this, open the preview menu in the top right and disable clip to canvas. Now all objects on or off the document are visible. So that was a look at the navigator panel and view modes in Affinity Designer for iPad. Thanks for watching.